I've got my information on the screen. You guys are welcome to reach out to me uh, through LinkedIn and connect with me. Just um, please let me know that you're from the Dallas Design Sprint world. And I'm happy, happy to connect with you guys and to answer any questions that you may have after this session. Um, so we're going to talk about Clifton Strengths today. I'm really pleased to be here. I, I really appreciate Robert um, inviting me to talk to you guys about this. I just want to explain the framework, the methodology to you guys um, so you get familiar with it. So there was this uh, guy about 40 years ago named Don Clifton who, um, you know, decided to study instead of looking at weaknesses and, and criticizing one another and always trying to improve um, in areas that are difficult for us, what, what happens when we look at areas where we're really strong um, and we have strengths in? And what happens when we put our time and energy into those areas? And, and um, does that make us better or does it not really impact the results or the, the productivity? So they did a lot of research and what they found um, as they started to study this methodology was that people who have the opportunity to focus on their strengths every day or six times is likely to be engaged in their jobs and they are more likely to report having an excellent quality of life so basically the thought process was okay if um, you are engaged and happy and excited at work then you're also going to be engaged excited and happy at home and i believe it's probably the same in reverse if we've got you know a good positive home life going on we've got a lot of support we've got um, companionship, then that's gonna overflow into work as uh, you know, having a higher quality life and being more engaged at work as well. So I think they go kind of hand in hand. Um, and so, sorry if the screen keeps flipping, I don't know why it does that. But these are some of the statistics that over the years when they've run the studies on various different groups, they've found. So what's really, really interesting is how many things are impacted by um, the strengths framework when people are using it effectively. So you can see that productivity increases, employee engagement. Um, what else? We got sales in increases, engaged customers, customer satisfaction. Uh, profits, of course, will go up. Then you see other things decrease that are good, like um, employee absenteeism or safety incidents or turnover or defects. And so uh, this has been statistically proven as a way to uh, get teams working better together, getting teams working together smarter and being way more productive with the people that they have on the team. Um, Robert, if there's any questions from anybody, do we just wait till the 20 minutes in to do that? Or do we open it up now if they have some questions? No, I think it's just as good that you just kind of go through the main presentation. Okay. And then if there are any questions at the end, we'll, we'll just field them then. Okay. So if you guys have questions when we go through this material, please write them down and don't hesitate to ask in a, in a, in a little while. Uh, we can come back to any of these slides um, if you do have questions. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So some of you may be going, okay, well, what is this Clifton Strength thing? Like, how do I read about it or get access to it? It is an assessment. And you can get to it by going to this website here, gallopstrengthcenter.com. There have been about 20 million people that have taken it. So any of the data that we're looking at today is based on this 20 million number. Uh, there is an app. So if you already have the strengths, you've already taken the assessment and you'd like to carry them around in your pocket, you can download the app and you would just log in using the email address that you used to take the assessment. And I also just wanted to make you guys aware that there is a YouTube channel out there uh, called called to coach and it's it's uh, a theme Thursday so they go through each theme or strength um, every now and again and you can watch videos of people that have your strengths and see how they are using them and optimizing and and how the strengths play out for those people uh, the, it also comes in multiple languages so if anybody is got a um, I know we're, we're global here today so if there's anybody who speaks another language um then hopefully you have a good option here for you it is it is most accurate when you take it in your home language um there are also three options when you go out there the three options are that you can buy the top five strengths for twenty dollars you can buy 
all 34 strengths, if you want to see how all the strengths sort of rank out for you from one to 34 for $50. Um, and if you've already got the top five, but you just need to fill in the, the bottom half of the strengths, you can, you can get the 29 strengths for $40. And you're talking in US dollars, correct? This is US dollars. Okay. Yep. And then I just wanted to point out a quick statistics to you all that when you look at just your top five strengths and you're looking at them in order, the order that they give you from one to five, there are 33, over 33 million combinations of these. So even if we're just looking at the top five strengths, we are, we are looking at you as a very, very unique human being that has something extremely important to contribute to your teams um, and to the lives you live. And I mean, we can, we can think about this when we think about like the number of people that are in a company that you work for. If you have, you know, 10,000 people in your company, then in your one in 33 million, then you are really, really unique, even in just your own company. Um, and then you can see at the bottom there, that huge number, um, that's if we looked at all 34 for each of you, that's how unique you are. And that, I don't know how many lives we'd have to live to get to that number, um, but it is really, 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 really unique. Okay. Um, a lot of people ask me questions around, well, what, what is different from this assessment versus another assessment? Why would I take this? What would I get out of it? So this one really focuses in and defines your natural abilities, what you're good at and what you'll like. Um, it also is great at defining your motivation. So we, might, we all might have a similar job to complete, but we're all gonna come at it very differently, have different perspectives, have a different paradigm and how we're motivated and, and, and what sits well with us in order to, like how we have to think about it in order to do a good job is gonna be different for everybody. Um, and so essentially this assessment shows, okay, what can you uniquely contribute to any environment you're in, whether that's at home, at work on a team like a design sprint team like you will be um, or you know volunteering somewhere etc it also ranks the strengths so we can definitely address priority which strengths are going to be stronger for you versus which ones aren't going to be as strong but this assessment does not define what career path you should take what your interests are it doesn't define extroversion and introversion um, directly anyway and so this one is, since it has 34 strengths, it is very detailed compared to a lot of assessments out there. Like a lot of people ask me about how does this compare to Myers-Briggs? Well, there's four main categories and you have a couple of options in each one. So that ends up being 16 combinations where, as you saw, this ends up being um, some astronomical number of combinations. So the depth is greater, okay. I also get asked, well, Brandy, how many times should I take this over the course of a lifetime? And I recommend every five years retake it. Um, as you get older, it's not going to change as much just because you're going to know yourself really well. And you're not going to be trying to be somebody that, that you're not or that society expects you to be. I also, like I said before, recommend taking this in your um, language, your natural language that, that you grew up speaking. And um, if you have a life changing event, then you also might wanna consider retaking it because sometimes when we have a huge paradigm shift, our priorities change and our mindset changes and, and the mind can actually change. Let's say if we're in a car accident thing, you know, biologically things can change. So, oh, sorry, you have a question. Let me see if I can figure out how to work the questions here. Robert, can you read the questions? Let's see here. Yeah, I'll be, if you're ready to answer good questions, we can do that. Um, the oh, first I just one is like, a question come through, so I thought I would answer it really quick. If, sure, go for it. But I, I can't see it now. <laughs> oh. so, well, the question was from Mahayal, and he asks, how can we combine Clifton Top 5 with the Big 5 Ocean? I understand that we are essentially different, so how can we make both results work together? And oh, okay. Plus ocean, O-C-E-A-N. Yeah, I don't know the big ocean assessment. I'll have to look that one up. Maybe I can um, take that as a takeaway for you and look it up and then let you know what I think. Okay. Okay. Um, yes. So this is what it looks like, guys. If you decide to take the Clifton Strengths Assessment, these are all 34 of the strengths. And I've included the percentages that they're found. So you can see, for example, that Achiever 
uh, is found among those 20 million people that have taken the assessment 31% of the time in the top five strengths. Whereas something like command is only found 5% of the time. So you can imagine that people with command are misunderstood very frequently about their approach um, because most people don't have it anywhere near their top five and don't necessarily understand um, why, for example, conflict might be a positive thing. And indeed command says, okay, conflict is the, the first step towards resolution. They believe that conflict is a very good thing. So they end up being extremely good negotiators. So then what it does is it takes these 34 strengths and it, it breaks them out for you into a specific order that you would get. If we were looking at just the top five, you would see something like this. Um, the order here is one, two, three, four, five, one being most important to this person. Um, and here we can see that this person is extremely analytical above and above everything else. And then they have a ranger at number two, which I know you guys don't know these strengths yet and what the definitions of these words are per Gallup's assessment. Um, but if you took the assessment, you would get the book or the ebook, and you would get to read about every single one of these strengths, even the ones that you don't have in your top five. Um, and then we can see that this person is really, really disciplined, and that's not found very often. That's only 7% of the time when people take this, do they get this in their top five. Uh, this person also has restorative, loves to solve problems, and, and enjoys uh, close relationships, one-on-one -on -one conversations with people. Okay, great. I see your, your comment, good. Okay, um, we can also take these strengths and we can put them into categories. This uh, is how Gallup uh, sections them into what they call a leadership domain, meaning the way that you naturally lead and if we tap into the way that you naturally lead and we start nourishing that and cultivating that, then you end up being a very strong leader in a, in a particular way. Now, some people have all four of these categories. And so for them, they lead in a multi-dimensional facet where if you have all of your strengths in one, then you're simply gonna primarily lead through one way. And it's just, this is all about self-awareness. There is no good, there is no bad here. It's about being really self-aware so that whatever you do, you know how to um, tap into your element and be successful. So if we go through these really quickly, strategic thinking element here, it, it just means that people that are really strong in this are your subject matter experts. And we're the ones that, they're the ones that we go to to get information and to say, hey, you know, you seem to be really strong um, in this area. You seem to understand these things. I'd like you to help me understand. Um, now, let's say someone has all these strengths in relationship building and they're really good at building relationships, they care about their relationships, they, they think about long-term relationships, but let's say they don't have anything in strategic thinking. That doesn't mean that they don't think, and vice versa. Someone that has all their strengths in strategic thinking, it doesn't mean that that person doesn't build relationships. It just means that how they build relationships um, and how they connect with people is gonna be very specific to their strategic thinking strengths. So I don't want you guys to think if you don't get a particular strength in one of the quadrants that you can't do any of these quadrants. It just means you don't have necessarily a natural ability there and you have to come at it a bit differently than someone where it just seems like instincts too. And if you have strengths in the executing phase, that means that you lead by example, others are watching you, they love how you do things and they are gonna mimic those. And if you have strengths in influencing, then of course you're a natural negotiator, you're great in sales, anything to do where you're trying to get people to do things that they wouldn't normally do um, without the influence of you. Okay, I also like to put all of these into a work cycle. This will just help contextualize everything when you look at your own strengths. And so, for example, some people are just really good at setting direction and seeing the big picture while others are great at getting projects up off the ground and increasing collaboration. You've got people who are extremely um, uh, creative and come up with new, exciting ideas. And you've also got people who mature the ideas into some sort of realistic solution. You've got people who are super organized, love to arrange, um, love to put things in a priority kind of order. You've got other people who are very, very good at managing and connecting with people. And then you've got some people who are just really keen on quality assurance and getting things out the door that are right and of high quality. And you've got people that are really motivated to just get things done. 
So just to let you guys know, we were looking at Robert's strengths earlier on. Um, this, these are Robert's strengths in order. He is analytical arranger, discipline, restorative relator. You can see that he mostly has purple here, which is an executive style of leadership. Um, so he, he is really, really, really strong in execution as most of you guys have probably seen. He's also really good at arranging things within that execution, which is why we're all here today because he's a natural facilitator. And you can see that he also has relators. So it's not just about facilitation of tasks, but it's about facilitation of people. And, and the discipline is setting up timelines, setting up long-term plans, um, and then restorative is liking to solve the problem. So if you think about why we're here today, the fact that we are looking at new ideas and how to build them out and how to conceptualize them, um, that's his restorative really kicking in and saying, okay, how do we solve the problem of getting everybody in a room and getting some sort of structured approach to um, produce some, some sort of product at the, at the end of the week. And then he'll go back and analyze every single element of that to see how he can improve it the next time that, that he does something like that. And you can see on the left-hand side that his natural ability sit into uh, organization and quality assurance. So basically what I tell Robert is if you just execute, 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 spend a little bit of time thinking about things and spend a little bit time um, building relationships, but you spend most of your time organizing, facilitating, arranging, and, and a lot of your time making sure that the quality is really high, then he can't help but be successful because remember, he is one in 33 million. And so if he's using his strengths and he's using them in this order, and he's ensuring that anything that he engages in or any environment that he puts himself in, that he's got this distribution, then he can't help but be um, highly productive and successful. And that pretty uh, much just and that pretty much describes me to a T. Not the successful okay, part per se, but <laughs> everything else you've been saying. It's like, yep, 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 yeah. yep. That's all me. Yeah, that's great. And then we can see here, Robert, your supporting strengths, right? Are that communication, includer, um, maximizer significance and responsibility. So now we see that Robert actually has a large amount of influence in his supporting strengths. Uh, he absolutely loves to, to communicate out to other people and share things with other people as well as getting other people to do their best work and make a huge impact. Um, and, and, and he likes to arrange a lot of people, which is the includer part. So when we look at someone's strengths, guys, and when you look at your own, you can't just look at them individually and read the descriptions that you get from Gallup individually, but you have to think about the combination. You know, what does Robert like to share and communicate? Well, he likes to share the process. That's the discipline. He likes to share how do we all get together and collaborate to solve the problem? Um, and those are, I'm com basically, as I'm speaking through that, I'm combining all of his strengths um, to see how they might play out together. And if we really wanted to um, have some fun, we would look at the bottom one and see that his last one is belief. <laughs> so basically he doesn't do anything based on just pure belief. He's going to analyze through it to ensure that it's a, the right thing to do, a good decision, um, et cetera, et cetera. Shamefully also the last, the, the, the second to last is achiever. So <laughs> everyone around me can basically have all the success they want and I'm just really in it for the process. Well, and we're not necessarily saying that you don't achieve things, right? We're just saying you don't come from a place of, a, of the, the perspective or motivation that an achiever comes from. You don't necessarily achieve just to achieve, but you still have strong execution um, with your arranger discipline restorative, it's just going to come from wanting to arrange things, wanting to build the process and wanting to solve problems. That's correct. Yeah. Um, I wanted to show you guys another methodology. This is Core Clarity, which um, is a company here in Plano, Texas. And they like to put the strengths into some different quadrants. You can think of the green and the orange as introverted. You can think of the blue and the pink as more extroverted. And then they like to understand how people like to connect which is on the left, and they like to, or, or let's say interact, they then also like to understand how they're motivated, which is on the right. Um, so if we were to look at the, all the different categories that they have, they uh, line them up like this, and they have all these percentages that they've realized. So you guys can see that no one falls into this charismatic zone of having you know, all their strengths into external motivation. 
but most people have what's called a lifeline where they like to connect with other people. They like to connect with themselves and they're internally motivated. Um, I've included the descriptions here in case we, you guys want this, these set of slides when we're done. Um, we won't go through them here today, but we will look at Roberts, which um, he is a lifeline and you can see that he has two green, two orange, one blue, which means he is, he is primarily introverted in the sense of, um, you know, thinking through things and arranging things, getting things done, restoring things. Uh, however, if you remember, he did have communication right at number six, which again gives him more external motivation. He enjoys uh, communicating out to others, uh, as well as relater is sharing other things with others and talking things through one-on-one. -on -one. So that's a, a way to connect with others. Okay. Um, I also just threw his 24, uh, his 34 strengths here. So you guys can see um, that he is a lifeline through and through all the way up to uh, number eight there, which is maximizer. Okay, um, let's move on to the team thing. So if you guys, if anybody on the call is ever interested in an individual consultation from me, that's the kind of stuff that we will sit down and talk about and go through. So you're more than welcome to reach out to me through LinkedIn and tell me everything that you're looking for, what, what kinds of things you would like to accomplish on an individual level, um, and we can uh, figure out what would work best for you. If you guys are interested in doing something for your teams for the sprints, um, this is the type of information that I do for teams. I would take everybody's strengths and aggregate them on the team so that you could see you know, what uh, strengths you have on the team, what strengths you don't have on the team, uh, who are your individual people that have strengths that no one else has. Uh, we would look at that same graph, but from a team perspective so that you could see, you know, this particular team, you can see they don't have influence all the way down to activator. They have tons of relationship building, um, tons of, uh, well, a few execution and then one little strategic thinking, but, you know, influence was, was pretty low for them. No wooers. If you guys are curious, woo stands for winning others over. <laughs> okay. Um, we would also break out the team's leadership styles. So you can see this is super interesting, right? Matthew there has all strategic thinking strengths. So it's really important that we understand Matthew and understand where he's coming from so that we know how to relate with him and work with him because he doesn't have natural relationship building skills, influencing skills, or even execution. Um, where you can see that Lindsay has a ton of execution. Let me go back. Uh, one slide here actually let me go back to robert's individual really quick one thing i just meant to mention back here guys is that since robert doesn't have belief achiever empathy ideation or command real high on his totem pole here he should be looking for people to partner with um, and he and i have discussed before that whenever he needs to get into these in, into anything super strategic or big picture thinking then sometimes he needs to go partner up with other people um, that have those as a top five strength in order to make that really good team come together um, and that collaboration around okay great now we have the details and we have the big picture working together i forgot to mention that Okay, so this is just showing the team versus Gallup. This particular team was just a little low on influence. So that just means they really have to depend on their influential people, which in this case were Artie, Andrea, and Jen. And so this just breaks out the work cycles for each individual so that you can see, okay, who is really good in which part of the process. Some people are really good up front, like Andrea, um, and then other people are really good on the back end, like Jen. Uh, also, we dump all those strengths and aggregate them into the core clarity model so that the team can see how, how they come out that way, as well as we group the team members based on their core clarity model because core clarity's model says that when you group people based on um, the way that they do it in these four quadrants, then these people will get along really well and work really well together. Um, so you can see that mostly everybody here is going to have lots of ways to connect. It's just Matthew that could 
particularly stick out a little bit because he's only there there's only it's only 1.5 percent of the time do we find somebody like Matthew who they call a guru and so it's just important to figure out how to to include him and use his strengths on the team and ensure that when he gets to work on things it's um, highly oriented towards uh, strategic thinking and an internal um, interaction or connection with himself just thinking basically he's a thinker okay and then other things that we can do is we can break them out in, in other ways now these are just a few slides that show you if you want to look at them you know other ways so you can quickly see which which team members have what um, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so that's all that I had to share with you guys today. I would love to open this up for questions um, and answer any questions that any of you have for me. So I have a quick question for you, Brandy. Sure. How would somebody use their strengths on an individual level in their own career? How would you? How do you normally see people taking their top five and employing them the way I've done them, and you've gone on display here? But uh, does it depend on the individual, or is it just uh, does it depend on the outcome they want? How have you kind of seen it played out? Yeah, there's a lot of different uh, scenarios. So somebody could be in a role that they really love, and they just want to know how to use their strengths better. So we talk about okay, here are your strengths, here are the things you're naturally good at, so here are the things you'll wanna ask the manager to continue to work on and give you more of, more responsibility in the areas that you're really good so that you can shine. Um, we've had people that say, okay, I really don't like my current role and here's why, so I'd like to find something else that matches up more with my strengths. I've had people say, okay, how do I work with some people on my team because I'm struggling? I've had other people say, I'm a manager and I'd like to understand my team strengths and, and how to work with them in, on an individual basis better. Um, some people don't have a job at all and they're asking for advice around um, what should I do based on my background, my experience, my interests, and my strengths. So it really does depend on what the individual is looking to get out of um, the consultation and what they're trying to improve on or what they're trying to do or where they're at in their life as well as the you know circumstances that they're in at that time what's the difference between just taking the test and having a professional coach like yourself helping you with the results yeah the thing that people have said to me most often is that when they get the insights report back they just don't know what to do with it and they also just don't get nearly the level of depth of working with a coach partially because the assessment can't consider a lot of other factors where when you're working with a coach, we can ask a lot of good questions around your interests and your background. And, you know, if you have 20 years of experience in a particular industry, we can consider that. We can consider what you're trying to do and what you want to do moving forward. And so it, we are able to just get much more detailed, much more specific, and actually, um, you know, hit a place that's really close to home and figure out ways and agree on um, actions to take towards the the actual goal that someone has in mind at that time because of course the assessment doesn't know any of that it's just basically saying here are your natural talents here's what you have to work with if you can find some ways to optimize or maximize those abilities then you're going to have success got it and what kind of testimonials do you have with your own work have you um showcased any any particular group or individual that that you've done besides me that you've done work with yeah um i i'll just give a recent example there's there's lots of examples i, I get emails and and linkedin messages every day um, this is the most gratifying job by the way for everybody on the phone because you get messages every day saying how much you're helping people and changing lives which to me is is uh, priceless but um, recently I had one who I was working with a guy, it was a little bit longer term, he did not have a job. So we were working with getting his resume aligned with his brand and getting um, like the way that he speaks in interviews aligned with his strengths. And we were building his confidence and um, you know, also just helping him choose which roles would, would be best and what wouldn't. And even down to looking you know, at the job search part of it, we would look at different titles and roles and we were really trying to find like, trying to get away from the titles and trying to get more into like the job function itself of what would really be great for him. And he finally uh, just landed this week 
and um, he will now be uh, a new director of uh, an IT group. And he's very excited. And the the size of the company is good for him. The 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 fact that he gets to go in and really rebuild the team is really exciting for him. He has belief as number one, so it was really important to be aligned with the company and the direction they were going and the volunteer programs that they had and that kind of stuff. And so not only did he land a job, which was good, but we both feel like this is a phenomenal opportunity for him. And, you know, we think that part of why he got it is because he interviewed so well for it because he was such a good match for it. And he was able to um, communicate that very clearly in, in the interview process, um, you know, like how passionate he was for what he might be able to do for them. And I think they felt it and saw it and said, we definitely want to bring you on. And, and by the way, guys, he got a great salary. <laughs> he got great PTO. He got uh, weeks off to go back home. He's, um, he's from an African country. Uh, so he really got just a phenomenal opportunity that, you know, both of us were very, very, very excited and pleased and happy about. So for the, for the global virtual design sprint that's coming out in April, we're bringing a lot of different people that have never known one another together to work on challenges. Some of them, most of them are, are going to be in the same region. They, they may have, they may meet each, other, meet each other online for an hour before the actual sprint week. If someone's self-aware of their strengths coming into this, how do you suggest someone positioning themselves for success beyond their skills or the role that they're, they, they're given for the design sprint? How do you see, how do you see somebody leveraging that? Yeah, so um, it's tricky if everybody on the team is not using a strengths-based approach because then they're not going to know what you're talking about. <laughs> they're going to be like, well, I don't know what you're saying to me, but what can you do? Um, if everybody speaks the same language, everybody's taken the strengths assessment, then everybody can sit down and put their heads together and say, okay, how can we as a team maximize our strengths? What can we have each person doing? What do we need to get done? And who do we have to do it? And who wants to do what? Um, because if you get people doing what they want to do and what they're super excited about doing and, and then they're highly engaged and you're going to have the most success. So you want to have that open conversation right away, guys. Um, but if you all haven't taken the assessment, you can still come in and, and state, Hey, I think we should all like, you know, lay out what we need to get done, what should, what, what's going to have to happen. And then who is really good at what, or who wants to do what. Um, but you just won't be able to use the strength language. You have to be a little bit more. Uh, conscious about just generalizing it and helping everybody, you know, understand just what you have to bring to the table, what you can contribute. But I think it's a great idea, Robert, to for every but every team to sit down up front at first and really talk through that part of it, and then start to go execute on what you need to get done. So for those of you who are listening right now and that are kind of viewing the screen, uh, we've finished the main presentation. If you have questions for Brandy, go ahead and go into the chat and Zoom and type those in. I think both me and Brandy can see them in real time as they come up. So Brandy, if you do field one question and then a number of them come in, I can basically yep. reference the, the, chat, uh, the chat window and be able to kind of relay, 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 relay those to you after the first one or a couple ones get done. So we'll see if anybody has any questions. Um, and beyond that, well, I think while we're waiting for those, you've you put some links in here on where to find you on linkedin um are you go ahead yeah there are there are some questions here oh i'm sorry that's okay um let's see here okay okay yeah so if you guys are interested in working with me either individually or with your teams um, I'd love to just talk to you individually and see what it is that you're trying to um, accomplish. And then we can decide how many sessions that we would want to have to accomplish that. And we would discuss um, what that rate might look like. I don't like to just throw out some random rate because um, it does, I think that can be sort of um, frustrating to you guys if we haven't talked about exactly like what you need and then what would be a fair rate for what you need. So um, if you do have questions about that, please just shoot me a LinkedIn. Um, we'll set up a time to talk and chat and we'll just really lay out like what you're looking for and what you would like to get out of working with me. And then we'll figure out a rate that works for both of us as well. Does that sound good? Sounds good to me, Brandy. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, I, I was just asking for the people who asked the questions. Oh, I know, I know. I'm, I'm only okay. joking with you. Okay. Um, are there any other questions that you're seeing? Because I'm, I'm looking in the open chat. I don't see any, but did they send anything to you directly? That was, the, I got everything. Thanks. Okay, great. Um, okay, any, any other questions about the methodology, the process? Um, you guys, you can, I don't know how much time we have left, Robert. What do we got? We got until the top of the hour. So we're at 1236 Central okay. Time. So we can probably go for a few more minutes if there aren't any questions. And yeah. then beyond, beyond the LinkedIn uh, profile that you put up here, if there's anything else you want people to know, like upcoming events or other places where you're at online that they should look, then uh, we can kind of go into that. Okay. Um, does anybody on the phone want me to go back to any of the slides? Do you have specific questions around those? Or do you guys have some questions about your own strengths or if we if you know we acted like we were just talking today about somebody's strengths like I don't know any questions around um, how different strengths work together they don't and you know what we could do is if chat is something that that doesn't seem to work for some folks who are having problems with it if you want then all that people have to do is just unmute their microphone and speak up and then they can speak directly to you if that would work as a, as a better proxy. Okay. Um, so so I got oh. another question that says, is there something like a career design sprint slash workshop format as a kickoff for a team collaboration? Usually the design sprint process isn't used for kickoffs per se, but lightning decision jams are. Um, <clears throat> I would say from a career standpoint for team, team collaboration, I mean, Brandy, you and I worked in that space. Yeah. We've got a multiple impressions because you have to kind of take the strengths finder assessment first. And then you meet as a team once everyone's kind of got the results in. And then from there, it, it, I think it goes forward. But you tell me if that's, if you're thinking of something different. Um, no, I loved what we did. We, you know, as far as understanding everybody's strengths and what everybody brought to the table and then really trying to um, figure out how to make that work. And I don't think we got it right on the first time. You know, we, we had to keep rearranging. And I think that was also what made it end up working brilliantly in the end that we continued to try to get people doing what they do best every day and getting them working with the right people every day. And that stuff kind of takes time sometimes. The core clarity, of. the core clarity material in particular was a breakthrough for me, just be seeing how the concept versus reality kind of bridged and it it really did work with a lot of individuals that were high performers at least at saber when we worked together mm -hmm. yeah. but yeah to answer your question for a career design sprint workshop format as a kickoff for team collaboration i can imagine you can fashion something around it if you combine strengths finder and experimented with the design sprint process and some of the activities yeah i think you could experiment and see what comes out of it and uh, Mahalo, if you happen to go down that route, do write about it because I would love to read about it or, or figure out how, how you went about it if you go that route. Raul, that's a, your question is a great question. Raul is asking if, if we need to read StrengthsFinder 2.0. And the answer to that is no. Um, the book is just basically a dictionary of all the strengths. And so what you want to do is take the assessment. And then once you get all the results from the assessment, then you can go back and read about your specific strengths and like read about the actions that they're telling you to um, take and start practicing those and trying to implement them. And then if you're interested in other people's strengths that um, let's say you have a significant other that takes the, the assessment, I assure you they will not have the same as yours. <laughs> um, then you're gonna have to go read about their strengths because they're gonna be completely different. And that means they come from a very different place of thinking and a different perspective. And so the book is merely to be able to reference all the different strengths. You don't have to read it before taking the assessment. Um, we have another, yeah, you're welcome, Raul. And then we have, uh, for example, what is the color of your parachute workshop format? I'm wondering how it might be used Clifton as part of it. Do you know um, that format, Robert, the What Color Is Your Parachute Workshop? I did. I used to, I took that a long, long time ago, actually. Mm -hmm. um, I, 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 and it's been a while since I, I took it when I was like 19, 20 years old. <laughs> it was a long time ago. 
What color uh, was your parachute? <laughs> I don't even really recall. It was, uh, I don't think, I, I think it was just like kind of like a, what I lean towards in terms of like work. But I mean, Mihail, if you want to give an example of what that's like, I, I, I'm so far removed from that and I haven't been, I don't know the updated version of that if there is one. Um, I mean, I imagine there are two different separate data points you can take from one versus the other. And between those two, between the workshop format, on what colors your parachute and the strengths finder one, you could probably go down that route. I, I've, I mean, the closest I've come to a workshop experience with strengths finder has been the core clarity stuff, just mm -hmm. because it was in the team's version, but everything I've seen with strengths finder has always been about the individual or at least been, been emphasized towards that. I mean, Brandy, what do you think? Yeah, I agree. Um, I've been working on some team material, but it really comes down to knowing your teammates and knowing the strengths themselves so that you know how to interact with other people on the team because you know once you get past okay i've engaged my own strengths and i'm you know producing and producing high quality work and having success and people are recognizing me for that then you start you know getting into well how do i interact with my teammates in a way that also helps them be more successful because if they're more successful and I'm being successful and we're all successful, then the team itself is more successful and we all get even more recognition and we get more done and we produce more results. And so it's important to, you know, once you have the self-actualization down uh, thing down pretty good to start turning your specs to the outer world and going, okay, how could I best interact with, let's say for me, you know, Robert, who has number one analytical, I know that Robert needs data. He needs facts. He needs really good sources. Um, I'm not necessarily the best person for that. I'm kind of an estimator. So if I needed to get him something, I would get him a subject matter expert that knows, you know, their stuff inside and out and ensure that he's getting what he needs to be successful. And so I think um, that that's where the team interaction or the team dynamic starts really coming to life is when you're not only trying to maximize yourself, but you're also trying to proactively engage others on the team. Including your manager. Very important for the manager. Yeah. Any other questions by the group? Going once. I'm almost wondering if somebody's typing slow and starting to sweat. Going twice. <laughs> you, what if you guys uh, feedback or thoughts? Can you do a quick type for us and just tell us if this was helpful, um, if this was interesting, if it doesn't apply? And now I'm just testing to see who's listening. Yes. <laughs> okay. What more? What more information do you need, Raúl? You're just going to go look up the links and the resources. Okay, I'm glad it was interesting, Abel. Thank you for responding. Abel, you in particular, I think if you if you had the time and, and would invest in it, you might benefit from doing just the the top five strength assessment, especially given you know how we've worked together in the past. It'd be interesting to see what you were. Um, what the the assessment sees your strengths as because I, I suspect there's a couple of them I already think that you have, but I, I, I would like to see if they actually come out in the, in the, the version of it. Okay, great. Um, yes, there is a way to anticipate estimated Clifton's top strengths of someone on the team without having them take the test. You, but you, re, you need to know the strengths really, really, really well, because um, when you know the depth of the strengths, like what makes up the strength, then you can start asking someone questions um, to understand their perspective, their motivations, where they're coming from. And you can start really starting, you know, start to see and identify the strengths. However, it is difficult because um, there are some strengths that overlap. So if you ask one question, you're actually asking the question and getting an answer that could be one or another strength. Um, and some people honestly don't know their strengths and they don't necessarily, they're not necessarily self-aware. So if you're asking questions and getting answers, you might, you know, they're giving you the best answer that they can at that time. Um, but if you're really keen on learning the strengths and studying them and working with a lot of people, then you start to really see them quite quickly. 
um, I, and of course I'm always guessing them, right. I'm always guessing people and what their strengths are before they take the assessment. So I can see if I validate it and I get, I get about two, you know, right. Every time. So you can get, you can get fairly good, good at it. Well, especially when you went to Clifton strengths training, when you went to become a certified Gallup and uh, strengths finder, uh, co a coach and consultant. I remember the conversation we had afterwards where you were saying, okay, I was actually when it, you went into a room and as you were talking to people, you were kind of in your head, kind of, you know, into your point, estimating like what exactly those folks and those strengths were of those individuals. And it wasn't just like you did the top five, it's just like, what was the most predominant one? You mm -hmm. encountered them. I remember that. Yeah, so um, let me explain a little bit more around the process. So basically, let's say you guys have a team and you want someone like me to come in and do a workshop for the team. Um, what happens is we talk about what is needed, the size of the group, how many groups, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. And we figure out how much time it's going to take and what kind of pricing works for your company, et cetera. And then um, we have everyone take the assessment. And then all the results need to come to me by a particular date because then I've got to take, you know, some time to put all the material together. And then I would either come to wherever you are or I would do a remote session for you if you guys are global and um, walk you through the material and we would do a, a team workshop or team session. So for example, if you have um, 15 people then it can take, depending on the number of strengths that the team has as well, it can take anywhere to three to four hours of going through the approach, going through the strengths, getting to know one another. And we do a lot of letting the, the, the teammates themselves talk about their own strengths and share with the rest of the team how they think those strengths play out in their lives. Because I'm just the same as the rest of you. I only have the top five. I don't, I don't have the other ones. So as much as I know about them, I don't live in that in that perspective so we let other people share their perspective and by the end of the workshop um everybody you know really knows each other much better there's an open language around strengths so that you know for example a manager can sit down one-on-one -on -one with their um with their team member and talk through the strengths and figure out you know how to get it engaged and working and i recommend you know every quarter sitting down with each employee saying okay um do you have what you need to, to be at your best every single day? And if not, what do we need to change? What do we need to do? And if you start implementing that approach on a quarterly basis of how do we, you know, change things up so that you're getting to do what you do best every day, uh, eventually you get into a situation where everyone is doing what they do best every day. And you guys can imagine what that would do for an organization if everyone's doing what they do best every day. Um, and so this does, this does take, uh, if you want this kind of culture at your company, it does take a minute to convince leadership um, on the approach. I mean, they buy into it quite quickly, but usually leadership isn't too keen on getting interested in, in implementing it. And so then there's another layer of, okay, working with HR and working with the managers and getting them really trained up on this approach so that like Robert did, they, ta they take ownership of implementing a strengths-based approach with their teams um, on a daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly basis. Because Robert, you you guys talked about strengths a lot on your team. Is that correct? Yeah, and for some of the some of the people I managed, it was transformative because when they started realizing what they were aligned with in terms of the the definitions of strengths through this process they were better able to align their efforts around those strengths, meaning that if they were somebody who was very achievement driven or somebody that had more execution strengths, they would be more catered towards that, 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 those approaches versus other people that would be more maybe introverted, maybe more strategic, perhaps they're more empathetic. They, they like being able to socialize. How putting them in a position to be able to facilitate communications across silos was more effective for them and made them more successful. So it was, it was part um, understanding the strengths and how people kind of will align with them, but it was also what seemed to make sense for them in terms of their work environment. So it was a bit of experimentation, but for certain people, if they went from being just say a senior UX designer one year and then a year and a half later, they are now leading product at another company and it sounds kind of audacious but that's exactly what happened with one individual i'm thinking about that we both know 
And it yeah. was primarily a recognition that what she was doing was aligned greatly with what she was really good at. And it was just a matter of doing more of it and staying in that zone. Yeah. Yeah. And I had an experience when I uh, worked on another team where I did the strengths workshop for the team. Uh, and it, it came out that no one knew about my discipline strength. Um, yes, Robert and I share that, that 7% discipline strength. Um, and another girl had analytical and, and I was on the strategy analytics side and she was on the process improvement side. And we both kind of looked at each other and we're like, should we switch positions? <laughs> and that is exactly what ended up happening. Even the leadership saw that, that Brandy was more process improvement oriented and the other girl was more analytics oriented and we both wanted to switch. And so they switched us and we both like just went leaps and bounds, um, like had exponential improvement in, in the, the work that we contributed to the group. So it was a really, really good decision by leadership to, to try it out. And the leader happened to be an arranger. So he just wasn't afraid to rearrange us, which was really good. And it's worth noting also that some people didn't, and I, I don't want to paint it with a broad brush. When I uh, employed this strengths-based approach at work, there was, there was, it was kind of like a 60-40 split. There were some people that kind of <clears throat> took the data, acknowledged it, did a little bit with it, experiment with it, but there was another group of people that said, no, it's nice to know, but they really didn't do any action with it, didn't follow through. <clears throat> that's, per, that's totally their prerogative. Yeah. The whole point of giving them this information and showing this approach was to give them an option of exploring how to best further their career to get along better with um, the people that they worked with to align everyone around a common purpose and goal based on what they did really well. And it was really optional. So I, I don't want it to come across like I made it just part of the everyday work as a, as a requirement. Yeah. I made it as this is what can potentially make your engagement at work that much better. And let's see where it goes. Let's take a baby steps. Let's make some small goals, achievements, work work in a very uh, pragmatic fashion in terms of how we did it. And for some, it was very successful. And for others, it just didn't stick. But that that was totally fine. And and just to let you guys know, I am super flexible as far as working with you guys. So, um, you know, for example, maybe you just want me to put together some material, uh, but you don't want to bring in a coach, or maybe you want me to help uh, train somebody else to facilitate or coach within your organization. Or, um, you know, you just want me to work with the managers and they'll take it out to their, you know, there's so many different approaches. I don't want you guys to limit anything today by the, the examples that we've given or mentioned today. Um, it's really about what do you need as an individual or as a team? How do you want to do that? What would be best for you as an individual or your team? And then we just, you know, talk about it and coordinate and sort out, you know, how that might look and work, so.